of a larger group. And we still play with a larger group from time to time where we'll incorporate saxophone and trumpet and sometimes even vibraphone. There's a great vibraphone player I love to play with in town. And so it just kind of depends on what the client needs from us. If we get hired for a wedding or for a corporate event, we found that the being the two person trio thing just opens it up for us to do a lot more coffee shops and I play a lot of art galleries and just really small venues mm-hmm. because we can get a big sound in a small place. It just seems to work out really well. And you guys have developed in such a short time. I'm really impressed. You guys have developed a feel that belies the time that you've been together. You sound like you've really been together a while and gotten a feel for each other. And, you know, you're on the same page and that's instantly obvious listening to your music. Thank you. Now, I wanted to ask you also, you're from southern Utah, an area that a lot of us don't get to go to very often. Do you get out of the area and uh, tour outside of southern Utah at all, especially now that we can start touring again? Well, you know, that's something we're looking at doing, and that's why we've um, started really trying to promote is we would love to do that. We, We are setting our sights on maybe next year as the world starts to open up again to at least get into a regional thing. I mean, Salt Lake City, three hours from us, and they have a, they used to have a decent jazz scene. Hopefully, hopefully COVID did not kill the scene like it has in a lot of places. Sure. Yeah. But I'm also an hour and a half from Las Vegas. And That's not a bad place like, to play. No, no, and I've got some contacts <laughs> there now, and so you know, I've got some friends in California. California, LA's like five to six hours, depending on traffic. Right. Well, the traffic is probably 12 hours, but you know, it, <laughs> it'll, it'll take me as long to get from the five to LA as it does to get from Utah to the five. But uh, I lived in Southern California back in the eighties. So I was familiar with what it is there then. And I'm sure it's no better now, if not a lot worse. So uh, I know exactly what you're saying there. Just not that I would ever subtly try to plant something in someone's mind, but just so that you know, John is in uh, southwestern Florida in the Naples, Fort Myers area. I'm in the Phoenix, Tempe, Arizona area. So if you happen to have that down on your on your notepad and you're doing some booking and you get a chance to play one of those areas, give us a yell because we'd sure as heck love to come out and meet you in person and hear you play in person. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, Phoenix is not that far. I had some in-laws yeah. there, and I love Naples. I was there about three years ago, man. Those beaches are awesome on that side of Florida. They are. Yes, they, they are, are indeed. They're beautiful here. Before we run out of time, I want to give you, as we do everyone that comes on the show, the chance to do your own commercial and sell your own self, your music, your group, and tell everyone how they can find you, how they can follow you, keep in touch with you, and as I always say, most important, buy your music. Yes, yeah, so... You can uh, you can find the Sean Owens Project on all the usual suspects such as Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. We, we're on there. We have the Sean Owens Project dot com, and that is uh, Sean is S H A W N Owens is O W E N S. So the Sean Owens Project dot com. Also on Facebook, we have a Facebook page again called the Sean Owens Project. And I'm on Instagram as Sean Owens Drummer. Anybody's welcome to send me a message or a DM. I try really hard to respond to everybody and because I just love sharing the music and meeting new people that are interested in, in music. It's always and a good time. We, en- we encourage our listeners to contact, to follow, keep in touch with the artists that they hear on the show that they like because I know most artists like to know what their listeners and followers feel about their music. And uh, that's a very important thing to us. So we thank you for mentioning that. We've got about 30 seconds left. If you would tell us quickly about this next track we're going to play called Indigo. Ah, yes. The tune Indigo is a beautiful ballad. And we're very fortunate here in Southern Utah where we don't have a lot of cloud cover and we have absolutely beautiful sky. So as the sun starts to go down, the stars start to pop out. uh, The sky takes on kind of an indigo color which is how the song got its name. And as you listen to it, just keep in mind that some of the arpeggio runs on the piano, they may or may not be reflective of shooting stars that we get to see quite often. And it's just a uh, nice relaxing piece that was brought on by just hanging out one night, drinking a good scotch, and just enjoying the nice warm air because we couldn't go anywhere else. COVID had to shut down. So 
<laughs> I understand that. We have the clear blue skies here in the daytime, but far too many lights to get a lot of nighttime stars. So I envy yeah. that because I've spent time in the dark areas where you can watch the unusual and spectacular stars. Thank you again, Sean Owens, the Sean Owens Jazz Product, for being here with us on the David Bowers Awards today. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is with a tune called Indigo, the Sean Owens Project.
Indigo. The Sean Owens Project. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you also, Fred Hostetler. We want to thank both of our guests, as usual, of course, and we want to thank you for joining us for another hour of new music, new artists, and hearing from the artists who make the music. That's what it's all about. That and you, because without you, there would be no us, and we thank you for that. John Bon Jovial, take us home. Okay. Well, you know that last piece of music that we heard from Sean Owens, uh, the, the thoughts going through my mind are, uh, a back alley in Boston. It's a nightclub. It's about 2.30, quarter to 3 in the morning. You're just wrapping things up, and you're with your very special lady. You're having that last drink of the night, and uh, it sets the mood. Nice yeah, job. Very absolutely. Nice job yes, indeed. it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it could be Boston. It could be New York City. It could be, you know, Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> Or Southern Utah, that's right. Well, folks, you have done it again, and we are so grateful that you have spent another perfectly good hour of your life with us here at the David Bowers Awards, and we hope to obviously see you again next week. We are broadcast around the world from the studios of Computer Help USA in Naples, Florida, and, of course, from the Valley of the Sun in Tempe, Arizona. And we are available for free on most of the streaming services, including PodPage. That's podpage.com forward slash The David Bowers Awards. And you can help The David Bowers Awards support indie artists wherever they may be and uh, the music that they play by clicking the link at the end of this episode on Anchor FM and making a donation. We'd really appreciate it if you do that. Click the follow link on the David Bowers Awards on Blog Talk Radio, Anchor FM, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and, of course, Facebook. And be sure to join us next week for the David Bowers Awards, Saturday on WRFC FM 106.3 on your FM radio dial. That's Rochester Free Radio in Rochester, New York. And you can hear us every Saturday at noon, Eastern, right here on WRFZ-FM, in addition to Rochester Free Radio. You can hear us on Blog Talk Radio, Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and 7 p.m. UTC. So until next week, for the David Bowers and all of the crew of uh, uh, Marble Mouth Moorons, including myself, uh, well, this is John Bon Jovial, the legendary one saying, uh, be good to yourself, get the booster if it's available for you, and we'll see you next week right here on the David Bowers Awards.